When you talk about the terminal bronchioles, we know they're going to subdivide into microscopic branches. These are known as the respiratory bronchioles. They're going to be lined by simple squamous epithelium. They will, again, divide into 2 to 11 alveolar ducts. Those will terminate into numerous, innumerable alveoli and alveoli sacs. The alveoli sacs are formed of two or three alveoli or thereabouts that are going to share a common opening. So the respiratory zone begins as the terminal bronchioles turn into the respiratory bronchioles and will include the respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar ducts and the alveolar sacs. And there is a diagram of those structures. The alveoli themselves are going to consist of two types of epithelial cells, as well as macrophages, which are going to be important, important for breaking down debris and dust particles and whatever else gets down into the level of the alveoli. There will be type 1 alveolar cells, and these are the guys that are going to form a continuous lining of the alveolar wall and they are basically a lining of simple squamous epithelium. The type two alveolar cells are going to sort of be studded throughout the lining and they will secrete the very, very, very important substance which is known as surfactant. Surfactant is a detergent-like substance its job is to go, which is going to be to lower surface tension and prevent the alveolar from collapsing. More on this later in the next lecture. So we need to completely understand the alveolar capillary membrane, which is known as the respiratory membrane. It is made up of the simple squamous epithelium of the alveoli the endothelium of the lung capillaries, and the basement membrane of the alveoli and of those capillaries, which will be fused. It is unbelievably thin. Half a micron, that's unbelievably thin. And it is going to be important that it is this thin because we need to have very easy gas exchange across that membrane by the simple process of diffusion. So what's its function? Really, really rapid diffusion of gas. And that diffusion will depend on the concentration of both oxygen and carbon dioxide. And to drive the point home as to how important that gas exchange is, we saw this in the last lecture, but here it is again. This is the amount of surface area, almost, that is the amount of surface area where a gas exchange occurs every time you breathe in and breathe out. Amazing. That's a good little video, that structure of respiratory membrane video, so make sure you check that out. Now, there's a good video of gas exchange there. The alveoli are going to be surrounded by these teeny, teeny fine elastic fibers, as well as those pulmonary capillaries. There will be alveolar pores that are going to connect adjacent alveoli, and they are going to be there to help equalize the pressure throughout the lung. The alveolar macrophages are going to be important because they keep those alveolar surfaces clean and sterile. Take a look at that statistic. Two million dead macrophages per hour are going to be carried away by cilia up to the throat and swallowed. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Just amazing. This picture on the left should look very familiar to you because we saw this or similar ones when we were looking at the epithelial tissues during our histology portion in 131. And that is a drawing on the left, or sorry, on the right of the alveoli with the alveolar pores marked out. 
This shows you the capillary beds that are going to su uh, surround alveoli, and it also gives you a, an idea of what the blood vessels around those alveoli and um, alveoli sacs look like. Up close and personal, electron mic microc my my scrus, forget about it. Electron micrograph of pulmonary capillary cast. Totally cool. And this gives you a picture of the alveolar cells that you need to know. There's going to be the type one that will form the actually al the actual alveolus, it's singular. And there will be the type 2, which will do what again? All right, those are the ones that are going to produce and secrete surfactant. And it also demonstrates how important the macrophages are to the alveoli. Now, the blood supply, we already know about pulmonary circulation. We know that the pulmonary uh, arteries are going to blood to deliver deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation. They're going to branch profusely and feed into pulmonary capillary networks. And we know that the pulmonary veins are going to return oxygenated blood from the respiratory zones to the left atrium. That shows you what's happening there. That should look very familiar. This, basically anything with when it comes to pulmonary circulation on this diagram should not be a surprise. And then we also have this. The lung capillary endothelium is going to contain a bunch of enzymes that will act on substances in the blood. In other words, one of them is angiotensin converting enzyme, that ACE enzyme, which will activate the blood pressure hormone. Who knows it? Who knows it? You should know it. We'll go over that in class. You already know it. I'll give you a hint. It's not ADH. Now, when it comes to the pulmonary vasculature for actual blood supply and drainage for the lungs themselves, you will have bronchial arteries, which are going to bring oxygenated blood to the lungs themselves. They arise from the aorta. They enter the lungs at the hilum. They are part of systemic circulation, not pulmonary circulation. So they are carrying high pressure blood that is of relatively low volume. They will supply all of the lung tissue except for the alveoli. And the bronchial veins are going to anastomose with the pulmonary veins. And the pulmonary veins are gonna carry most of the venous blood back to the left atrium. Fun fact. Pulmonary circulation was actually described in the 1200s. In 1243, an Arabian physician, Ibn al-Nafis, became the very first person to describe the very complicated process, which he detailed in a work named there. It took 300 years for European scholars to come to the same conclusion. Stay tuned for the next section in which we will start to actually talk about the physiology of breathing. Can't wait.